Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and on this channel we talk about all things music ed, especially ways to make your classroom more meaningful and joyful for you and your students. Today we're talking about a bunch of different Halloween activities that you can do with your students in K through four, um, some that are tried and true and some that you may not have heard of before. Before we dive into these activities, I wanna let you know that if you find this video helpful, of course you can like the video and subscribe to my channel because that helps teachers like you find my content and learn from it. But if you find this channel on the whole interesting, if you're a music educator, especially in K through four, you should join my email list. I send one, sometimes two emails a week to the ADM community, that's the A Different Musician community, talking about music teacher toolbox, tips and tricks, anecdotes, lesson plans, things about classroom management, um, activities, and updates um, from my TPT store, from this YouTube channel, and from my blog. If that's something that you'd be interested in, you can click the subscribe link below in the description box. Without further ado, let's dive into one of my favorite times of the year, Halloween. Now, I am on maternity leave until February, so unfortunately, I don't get to have Halloween with my kids this year, and that makes me sad. But that's part of why I'm making this video, is to share with you some of the activities that I would be doing this year were I in school with my kids. One way I like to do this is um, when I do centers, I will have a specific center that has a rhythm cut and sort activity. And um, you could do one that's themed for fall, you could do one that's themed for Halloween, but basically what I have students do is sort 16 different pictures into um, whether or not they have one sound or if they have two sounds. Um, so it's a syllable counting activity, but it also prepares them to maybe build rhythm using build rhythms using um, those kind of words as we get further into the year. So for example, candy, bat, zombie, moon, things like that that are gonna have students using a strategy to figure out what the rhythm is. Does it have one sound or two sound? This could be done as a whole class. You could give every student a copy or you could do it, like I said, as a center. I have a bunch of cut and sorts in my TPT store. I do have a fall themed one. I have a Halloween themed one. Um, so what you can do is get one of those or both of those. You can laminate them and cut out the pictures and make it a station or a center for your music classroom. You could make maybe two or three versions to have every person in the group doing it. Or you could give a copy to every student, have them cut out the pictures themselves um, and then sort them into categories as you circulate and check for understanding. Another fun rhythm activity that I do with, I would probably do this with second graders around October because first graders aren't quite at the ta TT stage yet. Um, but if your students are, fantastic. Um, the activity is called Secret Rhythms. And what they do is this is a this is a class activity that the teacher runs on a computer, but the students themselves don't need anything except either popsicle sticks or pencil and paper. They don't need technology of any kind, but they are going to decode secret pictorial rhythms that you project for them into their ta and tt translations. So for example, they might see a picture of zombie moon, zombie moon, and they have to decode that into ti ti ta, ti ti ta. And there are a bunch of different rhythms that have you know six different pictures all mixed up in different patterns and they have to sort them, or not sort them, they have to decode the pattern into ta and ti ti. I have a YouTube video also that explains how I make them in case you wanna to try to make your own version of it somehow. Um, but like I said, students don't need any technology, just the teacher needs to be able to project pictures somehow. Um, and in my TPT store, I have a freebie, like a mini version of Secret Rhythms if you want to learn how I run the activity in my classroom. October is the time for spooky tales. And I love to tell delightfully spooky tales in music class. One of my favorite Halloween books to use is Big Pumpkin. I love this book because I love to make all the different character voices. There's a vampire, there's a mummy, there's a witch, there's a ghost, there's a bat. This is such a fun book to read in school anyway, but to make it a little more applicable to music class, what you can do after you read it and students know all the characters, you can have them draw a character from a hat or from a bucket or something, and they have to say, say for example, Happy Halloween in that character's voice. So they're practicing with a creative um, interpretation of that kind of voice. So for example, a witch voice or a zombie voice or a ghost voice, actually I don't there's a zombie in here, um, but a mummy voice or a bat voice and their peers have to guess what kind of, what, what character they're trying to be. And the characters are all pretty different from each other. So for example, a witch voice is probably going to sound different from a vampire voice. It's going to sound different from a bat voice. Um, and you might even talk about that before you have students choose what kind of character they wanna act out. 
what would um, what what musical vocabulary words would you use to describe the voice of a witch? And you could talk about things like if you're reading this maybe in third or fourth grade, things like timbre, but maybe even in the younger grades, you could talk about things like what kind of dynamic level are stu are uh, what kind of dynamic level would a would a small bat be speaking at versus a big mummy? Or uh, how fast would a certain character talk? Or things like that that just get students thinking about how they're going to use their voice creatively to represent the character that they draw from the hat or the bucket. For the next activity, we are going to use these. I was so thrilled to find these um, pumpkin eggs at Target last year. I am the kind of person who will see something at the dollar store or at Target and buy it and then be like, okay, how can I use this in my classroom? What I use them for is a game called Who's in the Pumpkin Patch? And this is sort of like, um, uh, I guess the song is Jack Frost. Um, anyway, it's inspired by this, the, the song that goes, um, who's that? Tapping at the window, who's that? Knocking on my door, Jack Frost. Tapping at my window, Jack Frost. Knocking at my door. But instead of doing that, which is more for winter, obviously, I changed it to be more of a um, Halloween or a fall or a pumpkin theme. We sang, who's that? Picking all the pumpkins, who's that? In the pumpkin patch, who's that? Picking all the pumpkins, who's that? In the pumpkin patch. And what I'm doing here is doing do, so. Then I click the sticks to the rhythm of the words. Do, so. Click, 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 click. Do, so. Click, 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 click. And you could take the clicks out, I guess, and just do do, so. But as students are singing and as some students are playing that pattern, what's happening with the eggs, and this requires a little bit of prep, um, I have taken five or six of them and I've filled them with different things that make um, discernible sounds. So in the past, I've filled, um, an e I filled eggs with um, a, a Lego, I've done paper clips, I've done coins, I've done shells, um, I've done beads, but you could do any small little thing that's going to fit inside. And um, what students have to do is reach into a bag or a tray or somehow they're reaching to grab um, one of the, sorry, these are fun to play with. No, they're reaching into a bag or a bucket or something to grab um, one of these filled pumpkins. And when the song is done, we sing it twice like I demonstrated, they take the egg out and they shake it and they have to try to guess what is inside. So you have shown them what the different options are. I even have an extra set of things just that I lay out so they don't forget. Oh, I didn't, I didn't remember there were coins. I didn't remember that there were paper clips. So they can either reach in and try to um, pick one that they think they can get or they can reach in at the end and grab one from the pumpkin patch. Um, one thing to be careful about, we do a lot of prep ahead of time to make sure that students know how to grab the egg because if they grab it too tightly, they are going to open it up and sometimes that just kind of ruins their turn. So we do a practice round, we pass an egg around without breaking it, we practice picking eggs up, shaking it without opening up the egg. So there is a little bit of prep to this, but it's a game that can take, you can split between two different classes tip if you are doing a game like this that is a little has a little more than like it's more than one part you know I have students who are playing a xylophone or a barred instrument there are students who are being the pumpkin pickers and I usually have two students go at a time from two separate buckets because that just helps us move the game along you still might want to keep track of which students take turns doing what um I just I really try to make sure that every student gets a turn doing a thing in the games we play, whether it's half one class, half the other, or, or whatever, I try to make sure that every kid gets a turn. So I keep track in my like, attendance book of who took turns doing what. I do have a blog post explaining this game a little bit more um, in depth um, and a little bit less convoluted than I am because I'm distracted by this egg. I need to not be holding it. But I have a whole blog post about how to play um, who's in the pumpkin patch and different things you can do to prep to set up, things you can put inside the eggs, but this is a great one because it has students um, using a variety of different skills and that's just always fun to have students trying all different things like that. Another fantastic book that I um, 
picked up last year and um, I read through it once at Barnes & Noble and thought, yeah, I need to buy this for the classroom, um, is Hardly Haunted. This is a lovely, adorable picture book about a house that suspects that she is haunted and it goes through a bunch of different reasons why she thinks that, including different sound effects that happen in the house. Creaky floorboards, um, pipes, wind, all different kinds of things. That's where the musical tie-in comes in. You can read the story multiple times, it's very short, but you can have students either add live sound effects with their voices, with different instruments, or you can turn this into a sort of sound and story project where you maybe assign certain students or maybe certain groups, because it is such a small um, or short book, um, a different sound effect. And then you do a live reading and the students produce their sound or make their layered sounds as you read the story. This next one is a tried and true. I think a lot of teachers use this one. This one is Pass the Pumpkin, where students sit in a circle and they pass a pumpkin around. Um, and when the song stops, the student who is out moves to an instrument and either keeps a bee or plays an ostinato of some kind. And as more students get out, the person on the instrument moves over to the next one and then the next one and then the next one. And once the instruments are all exhausted, that person who is on the last instrument comes back into the circle. I will link the YouTube video where I learned this from below. Um, so you can check that out. I'm not gonna sing the song for you, but it's a great um, beat game, you know, passing to a steady beat. It gets students playing instruments. Pass the Pumpkin is a great one to do K through four. And you can have any number of instruments that students move to when they're out. You can use boom whackers, other pitched instruments. You can use um, different percussion instruments. And you can have one at the end that's the special, like a gong or a tam-tam or something fun that they can do. But do check out the video. I learned it from this video and it's, it's just, it's an amazing game that you can play at Halloween. But you know, if you're like me, you can change the words and do it in the springtime or in the winter time. But Halloween is a great time to introduce it. I know this video is Halloween activity themed, but there may be some students out there that you have or know of who cannot participate in Halloween activities at school. If they can't do an activity like Pass the Pumpkin, Black Snake is another one that could be a good substitute. This is a song that I learned from um, Beth's Music Notes. I'm gonna link the song below, but it goes, um, Black Snake, Black Snake, where are you hiding? Black Snake, Black Snake, where are you hiding? Black Snake, Black Snake, where are you hiding? Please don't you bite me. That's the way that I learned it anyway. Um, but they're also, as they sing that song, students are passing something around. It could be a snake, you know, a proper snake. It could be a ball. It could be, you know, just an object of some kind, but it could work the same as Pass the Pumpkin where whoever uh, has the object when the song is over is out. They move to an instrument, they play um, an ostinato or a pattern of some kind, and students rotate through the instrument lineup and then come back into the circle once they've exhausted and gone through like, all the instruments. That one is a good alternative to um, Pass the Pumpkin because it's more animal themed and just, you know, happens to fit at, in the fall, you know, around October, but isn't specifically Halloween themed. Another one you may have heard of, this is another tried and true one that I learned from YouTube. The Move It to Kabalevsky's pantomime um, is like a monster or a zombie coming to life or coming out from the ground. It's so much fun. Um, you could use the version that I will link below. You could have students lead their own movements um, or I guess <laughs> choose their own movements as they do it. You could have a student leader try it out but this is a really fun one because you can talk about all kinds of musical aspects here. You can talk about tempo, you can talk about dynamics, you can talk about texture, um, but this fits so well. It's just so delightfully spooky and the move it is just, you could turn the lights off and just make it really creepy and really fun. Um, I would probably do it with two through four, maybe grades one through four. Now, if you are looking for a project or something to get you through multiple classes where they're doing um, something sort of additive, as opposed to, hey, you know, in the first week of October, we're doing this. And then the second week, we're gonna try all these different activities. If you're looking for something that's a little more, um, ooh, I guess streamlined, um, I have a project in my TPT store called the Candy Ostinato Project or the Halloween Candy Ostinato Project. You don't, it doesn't need to be Halloween themed. It's, I think it's really mostly based on candy, but this is a project geared towards grades four through six. If your third graders are really proficient in rhythm, they could probably handle this as well. But the theme, the whole, the whole goal of the project is to have students team up 
in groups, maybe two through four, and write layered candy ostinatos that they end up performing for the whole class. So students learn what an ostinato is, they learn how to, um, how to write them, how to compose, how to plan, imagine, how to perform in a group, how to work together to come up with ideas, how to practice efficiently, and then at the end of the fourth class or the third class, this probably would get you through, I mean, it's going to get you through at least three classes if you have like 40, 45 minute classes, but it could get you through four, especially if you want to do something really cool at the end, instead of in performing these for their own class, you could do a mini concert where students travel to a lower grade and perform them for their peers. You could video them and put them on a Google Classroom and have them share with um, another grade level class and give each other constructive feedback. There are all kinds of ways that you could sort of extend this through the month of October. The project itself contains lesson plans, um, Google Slide supplements, um, all the student materials, two different kinds of rubrics, um, how to meaningfully a sheet on how to meaningfully assess students, but it's absolutely everything you need to run this project and teach students all the concepts that they need. Um, they do they would need to know things ahead of time like what rhythm is and what composing means <laughs> and um, what you know basic rhythm notation. You could do this with ta t t rest. You could have them do it with um, 16th notes. But it's a great way to get students working together towards a larger goal over the month of October. And if you um, are on leave like I am, this could be something that you leave for a sub because everything you need in, you know, to run, like I said, to run the project, to teach them the information, to get students from starting to start to finish with this um with this material is all there for you in this project. And if you like the idea of candy astinados, but you already have October planned out, oh man, I have a Thanksgiving one too, I have a winter one, I have a handful of them. And Halloween is one of the best times of year. It's one of my favorite times of year with students. It's probably Halloween and like December, like winter time when we do the Nutcracker. Um, I just love Halloween. And um, if you have any activities that you love to do that are like mind-blowing or hey no one's ever heard of this or um, hey it's kind of like that one you mentioned drop them in the comments below let's share what we do at Halloween you can also DM me on Instagram you can reach out to me via email um, and share some of the activities that you do either ones that you try from this video or ones that you do every year that you want me to know about and to put into my plans for next year when I'm back with my students after my maternity leave if you found this video helpful, you can like it and you can subscribe to my channel. I try to put out two or three videos a month. Some are me talking like this and some are student activity videos. You can check the playlist for a bunch of different seasonal activities, um, you know, rhythm activities, things like that, that you can do in your classroom. You can also find and follow me on Instagram and TikTok where I share a bunch more different lesson ideas, classroom management tips, general music teacher toolbox, advice and ideas that can help you in your classroom, whether you're a veteran teacher or just starting out. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I have an email list, the ADM community that you can join. I send one email a week, sometimes two, depending on whether or not I have so much to share with you. Um, you can subscribe to that below, but that takes care of the video for today. Happy Halloween and happy music making.